Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Congratulations, you've made it. You have a senior, which is going to go extraordinarily fast this year. Um, and it's a very, very busy time, I know, um, for having a senior. Um, so hopefully tonight we can, um, we, we will answer a few of your questions that you may have, some lingering questions just on the process of putting out those applications. Um, so just a few introductions to get started. I'm Kristen Lazaro. I am the Director of School Counseling for the District. Um, I'd also like to introduce Rochelle Morin, Matt Fitzgibbons, and Julie K. Hiloshe, who are also counselors here at the high school. Um, so first and foremost, just a few things to update you on. Um, this year, the counselors, all the counselors, including myself, are teaching transition seminars. And the transition seminars actually occur in the health and wellness um, classes. So we have been um, linking up with them. And every other week, your seniors will be in class with us to talk about transitions, which is actually a very novel idea, right? So um, some of the things that we're gonna be covering in the first lesson was covering basically um, thinking about all the business really that the seniors right now need to be um, thinking about and uh, getting into, such as the Naviant software. We have a new um, software that is part of Naviant to log all their community service. We talked about um, the college representatives, how to sign up for it. We gave them a whole bunch of mishmash of stuff. As the semester goes on, we're going to continue with that conversation, as well as talk about stress management. What does year 13 in college look like, or wherever you end up going? So there'll be a lot of different things, so hopefully um, your student will share that with you, or please ask them about it. It's every other week. Um, semester one, we meet with freshmen and seniors, and semester two, we're going to meet with sophomores and juniors. So if you have students in any other grades, they're also going to get this um, transitions curriculum. So it's new to us this year, um, and I think it will be successful and help them be in a better place as they move on from year to year and then graduate from here. So we've had many college representatives visiting Hamilton Wenham. This year, I believe there's 125 scheduled to come and visit, which is our largest number yet. Um, students do sign up through the Naviance program. They should know how to do that. I would highly encourage you to encourage a student to check their student email every single day because things get pushed out to them all the time. And it might not get pushed out to you as well. We are going to, um, st every week, start doing the, le the week ahead of the colleges that are coming to visit. Um, and we will click the send to contacts too so that you'll get that in your email to remind your student to come down and visit with them. But also one of the handouts lists out all of the schools that are actually coming in the dates. Some of them have already been here, okay? So that you can put that on the fridge and highlight it or whatever. As a reminder to that, the people that do come and meet with our students are actually the people that read the Hamilton Wenham applications. So that demonstrated interest or um, just so that they can meet each other and ask those questions. It's usually in a pretty small setting. Um, but it's, if it's a number one or number two choice, you probably would want your student to go to that, okay? And if they don't make it because they have a test that time, that's okay too. We have contact information for all of these representatives and the counselors are more than willing to send off an email for them or your student could do that as well. Um, so the visiting college procedures, basically what students need to do is they need to get into their Naviance account and they're gonna just see it just, is, just lists all those out and it says register. Please ask your student tonight if they know how to do it. If they say no, demand they come and see us in um, the guidance office tomorrow during Power Block or any time during the day, and we will help them do that. And also, um, visiting colleges, now is a great time to do that. Um, in fact, October 5th is a full day professional development day. It's a Friday, it would be a great day to get out on campus. Um, and then over the Columbus Day weekend. Um, basically, students need to, in the guidance office, we have a purple form that they have to have filled out. It has to be signed by their teachers. And there's three um, school visit days that are excused that students can take the day to actually go visit colleges. 
Okay, so again, if anybody has questions about that, um, just send them down to us and we'll get them set up for it. Okay, so one of the things that we want to clarify this evening is something that can be very confusing for the kids because there are so many different options for applying as far as deadlines. We want to make sure everyone's on the same page so we don't drop any balls along the way. So colleges, many colleges will have what's considered a regular decision deadline. It may be, it could be any time. It may be January 1st or the 15th, February, March, it could be in the fall but it will be tagged by the college as a regular decision deadline. You apply by that date, and then you wait like everybody else, hoping to get the answer that you're hoping for. Early deadlines are the bigger source of confusion. So there are two, um, well three, technically three different early deadlines. There's early action, early decision, and then merit deadlines. So early action, I'll start with that because that is probably the most popular deadline amongst our students. Early action means that you're going to apply early, you will hear back from the school early, but you are you have until the spring, in most cases, to notify the school. So for some students, it's a great way to get an early read on am I looking at the right kinds of schools that academically and statistically and all of everything that's in my application, am I a good fit for these schools? Other kids just want to get it over with, okay? But when you apply to a school under the early action deadline, you are not committed to that school. And that, that's the huge difference between early action and early decision. Early decision is also an early, early deadline. Again, some kids will want to do something early just to be done with the application. But early decision is the one where you sign a contract making a commitment to that school if that student is accepted. So that is not something to take lightly, and students should take it pretty seriously. And there is that contract that says, um, parent signs, I sign, or the counselor signs, and the student signs, now it's pretty much electronically, saying if, if I'm accepted, I will withdraw all other applications. So that's something that we talk to kids about, making sure they understand the commitment, and that's typically a school that the kid is so in love with and so sure about that they are ready to make that commitment. We don't see as many early decision students as we do early action, but it is one of the options. And then some schools will have an earlier application deadline if they are looking to award merit money, and so that's something to be mindful of as you're looking at deadlines for schools. Some schools will do merit money straight through the regular application process, but some will post a specific deadline that's different specifically for the merit money. Yes? Is there, um, if you apply early action and you are denied that, mm -hmm. does that hurt you regular, your regular application? So that's, that's a great question, thank you. So early action, as with early decision, students could be accepted, they could be denied, and they could be deferred. So if a student is deferred <coughs> to the regular pool, in most cases they're considered like a regular decision person. It's a good idea to check the websites of individual colleges just to see if there's any specific language around <coughs> these deadlines. For example, there are some schools that will say that they review early action applicants more rigorously because they're trying to, they, they may not, I, the one school I have in mind is BC that had, I don't know this year if it's still there, but it had right on their website that they are, that they are more rigorous with early action. So some students will apply early to places just, oh, it's on Common App, it's really easy to apply to a lot of schools and some schools don't want applications unless the kids are really serious. So that's the only thing I've seen recently, so. So I don't think it hurts them, but I think it's important to know that it is possible to be rejected. Okay? So those are the early deadlines. Then there are schools that have rolling deadlines, and a rolling deadline means they will accept students as they receive the applications. So it is, and it may be rolling until the class is full. It might be rolling until a certain date. So it might say rolling until March 1st or something like that. Open 
An open application deadline means that the school is pretty much open to everybody. So for example, our community colleges are an open enrollment school. Obviously, if everyone on the planet applied at the same time, they might not have room for everybody, but it is not the, the pressure cooker of applications. You fill out the application, and pretty much you're accepted. Um, so open is, is, is one of the other <coughs> options. And the priority deadline. So priority deadlines, what we're seeing um, an uptick in those schools that are sending applications to students and it might look like they were selected for a specific reason. Um, sometimes the letters make it sound like the child is really special in some way, either <laughs> academically or scores. Now, we know that the kids are awesome, but we're not quite sure how they know that they're awesome. What we're seeing is that it's a way for colleges to encourage applica applica applications. And there's often something that they're waiving in the process. If you apply by this deadline with this application, we'll waive the fee, we'll waive the essay, we'll waive something. There's usually some benefit. We'll give you an answer in two weeks. But what it's doing for the colleges is boosting the number of applications and lowering their acceptance rate. So it makes them look better for things like national magazines who rank schools. So while it can be great for a kid to get that easy application, it's perhaps not the big, wow, you're so great that sometimes it feels like. So just to know that those deadlines can vary. It could be a fixed deadline. It could be more of a, we'll give you an answer so many days after you applied. So we just want to make sure everyone's, everyone's on board with that. So some pretty key information. Every school has the right or the opportunity, depending upon your perspective, to do things their own way or to their own preference. So it's really important that you check the admissions page or that the students check the admissions page of any of the schools that they're applying to to make sure that they're sending the right information and sending it at the right time. It could be both the application, it could be testing, it could be how many recommendations, we need an essay, we don't need an essay. Basically, whatever they want, we want to make sure it is sent. And it can vary. So you want to visit the college website for college-specific information. Also, just excuse my voice, it's going so fast. Um, you also want to check as deadlines approach to be certain that materials have been, see been received by the colleges. So for example, if you have to send SAT scores, it's, it's not a bad idea to be proactive and make sure that you order those scores in advance of the deadline and to follow up to make sure those scores have been received. Sometimes kids know that they've sent the, the scores, we can see it in their college board account, and yet the school doesn't have them. So it's not a bad idea to track what you know has been sent and then follow up later to make sure it's been received. Are, are you suggesting that we call the colleges, or can you see that? Sometimes it's an online portal. Okay. When a student applies, they can register to be able to see things online. Okay. So sometimes it's something as easy as that. Or if you know that the scores have been sent from the October test date, and you just want to make sure that they're there, it's, there's no harm in calling. Okay. The and reverse is then the college says, no, we don't have them. Then you're sending them and they're waiting. And does the same thing go for recommendations? So we'll talk about recommendations in a little bit, but the recommendations come through the guidance office. So, but we'll get there. Okay. Standardized testing. <clears throat> Most students are taking either the SAT or the ACT. Colleges now, all of them will accept either. Again, just like the other things we've already mentioned, you need to know this, the kids need to know the specific requirements for each college. Do they need te te my scores? Do they not? Are they test optional or are they requiring my test scores? Again, the sooner you can send those scores, the better to make sure that they're there by the time they're ready to read the application. You have to send the test scores, and this is, we, we did a quiz with the kids, a little Kahoot quiz, and one of the questions was who sends the test scores? 
Um, and it was, it was telling that it, that's a confusing piece for kids. Um, so in order for the test scores to get to the college, they have to be sent through their college board or ACT account so that they are receiving an official score report from the school. There are very few schools, maybe growing, I'm not sure, um, that will take a screenshot of a student's score report. Um, I met with Swanee today and they said, yes, we, we're fine with it. We don't want the kids spending any more money. Mm -hmm. So there are some that are okay with that, but the default position is you need to send those score reports unless you hear otherwise. So the SAT website, College Board website is for the SATs, and ACT goes through ACT.org. Then there are schools that are considered test optional. Some might name it test flexible. A test, a test optional school is a school that does not need the test scores to evaluate an applicant. So it's up to the student to, stop, to decide if they want to send their test scores or not. That's something we're absolutely happy to talk to the kids about if they're not sure, should I send, should I not. Um, so far this week, I think I've had that conversation every single day. Um, if a student chooses to exercise the test optional option, Colleges have been very consistent in saying that it's not going to hurt the student, it's just a piece of information they don't have. And if a student is choosing not to send the scores, it's a piece of information that they probably don't want the school to have. Um, we do have students whose day-to-day -day work in the classroom is a far better representation of who they are as a student, and the test scores, not so much. What they do once, one Saturday out of their life. There is a website, fairtest.org, where you can see the list of schools that are mm -hmm. test optional. That's also where you can see the handful of schools that are what they call test flexible, which is a much, much, much smaller group. But schools that want to see standardized tests, but give the kids a variety of options to meet that requirement. So, ta-da. Oh, so Matt, you're up next. Yep. Yep. All I'm right. going to go man the door. Thanks, guys, for coming again. Um, just wanted to touch base on a question you asked about, let's say a student unfortunately was like waitlisted or put deferred or didn't get in. What I've done in the past with students, we all do is we craft a letter to that school, okay? So let's say that's their dream school, they, they didn't get in, we'll craft a letter, you know, like, this is my dream institution, this is where I want to spend the next four years of my life. I could see myself like retiring here one day. And <laughs> so it works. Like last year I had two students, both of UVM, they did not get in right away. We crafted a letter. They ended up getting in later off the wait list. So it does happen. So if you don't get in right away, there's still hope. Okay? So just know that. Um, so will you tell the students that too? They know. And But if you want to tell them you're at home too, if they don't get in, there's still, still hope to go. Okay? So, student responsibilities. These the students know this. We've been telling them this for the last six months, the last two weeks, the first month of the year. So for us, there's a counselor rec form in Navion. So. We're going to write every one of your kids a student letter of recommendation. We just need them to fill out a form in Davion's for us. So we all know them pretty well. This is just them going through the four years, adding information for us so we can write it so we know a little bit more. All right. It's huge for the kids too. Let's say freshman, sophomore year, something happened, semester one didn't go as planned. They had, they had mono, they were sick, they broke their leg, they had missed a lot of school. This is where we want them to tell us. So in their letter, we can say the reason why they struggled in school that in a month that grade wasn't where it was because this happened okay so from freshman year I wasn't here say someone was sick this is where I want them to tell me so I can put that in the letter so that admission counselors know all right um, counselor form there's like 15 questions now we're gonna have them go through you know honors what they do outside of school if they have a job so let's say you know they really wanted to play sports but they have to help out the family at home to you know make some money that's where we want to know that so that's something that's great for that counselor who's reading that admission to know. Um, so Naviance, this is huge too with the type of app and deadline. So on Naviance, there is where you put, if you're going EA, regular, early decision. That's huge for us to know because let's say the student wants to go early action, but is listed on Naviance as regular decision. We're not gonna send their stuff until that regular decision date. So this happens every year with students where they just don't make that switch. So they, it's very, very, very important, especially if they're going early action with deadlines coming up. There's some early action deadlines coming up October 15th, October 20th, depending on the state you're going to or the schools. They need to have that deadline in there correctly for us. 
every year. Kids will come down. You know, UMass Lowell, for example, they didn't get my stuff. You go into Naviance, it's listed as regular decision, and then they, their shoulders just drop and they panic. But then, whatever happens in that situation, we just call admissions and work it out. The school's not going to punish to get it. <clears throat> All right. We have also a thing called the transcript release form. So before we can send the transcript to schools, we have to go through a checklist with them. We sit them down one-on-one -on -one in guidance, we just go through the list and make sure they know everything they need to do before they send off the stuff to school. So this year, it's just a $5 fee. Um, before it was $2 transcript in the past, now it's just a $5 one time. All right. And then, like Ms. Warren said, ACT, SAT score, little confusion. Some kids think that we send it. You guys send it through College Board, or and you took the ACT through ACT. So this year, there's an October 6th test. Scores are actually going to be back before the November 1st deadline. And then also, you know, schools will super score. So if, um, just once you get those, send them out so they have them on file. All right, te te teacher recommendation forms. So we've been harping, we've told the students for the last, since junior year, ask your teachers before you leave to write your letter of recommendation. Especially senior teachers, junior teachers you had, will get swamped. So the kids know that. If they tell you that we didn't say that, they're going a little fib. All right? <laughs> so for what we tell the students, let's say a kid's applying for, to, to be a business major. All right? It would be very wise to have Miss Wheeler as one of your recommendations. Or if you're applying to be a bio or science major, it would be wise to have a science teacher as one, with one of your teachers. Most students have two, two teachers. They'll get the guidance and then you know, people will have an outside rec. So let's say you play a sport, you're on the football team. A lot of kids will have the football coach write them a letter. A lot of kids will have their boss or a church or youth leader or, a, you know, a personal friend from outside. So if that is happening, they need to send a letter to either one of the counselors or Miss Adonis so we can upload it. So on average, we see, you know, the students have two letters of rec, one from guidance, and then sometimes the kids will have one from outside. All right. Schools, you know, all the reps will tell us sometimes they get 10, they don't want to read 10. All right. So, you know, three or four at the most. Um, this is huge, too, for the students. They know this. We've been harping on this the last few weeks. They have to request the teachers in Naviance. Okay. That way the teacher will get a request from the kid being, all right, I got uh, a recommendation from the student. We have them write a little note, a blurb saying when the first letter is. So, you know, for example, dear Mr. Campbell, my first letter is November 1st. Can you please have it in by then? Thank you very much. All right. So what happens every year is kids will run up to a teacher a week before the deadline being like, can you please write this? No teacher is going to ever turn down a kid to write a letter, but just please give them some time so they can write it. Um, same with us. That um, If you have a November 1st deadline, we have to try to get it that 10 days before so we can draft it. Um, first. Matt, can I ask a question about the recommendations? Yeah. I heard that the um, teachers are being recommended to write bullet points this year rather than pros. Can you address that? Yep. So we meet, we meet with a lot of reps, and these reps get thousands and thousands and thousands of recommendation letters, thousands of applications. Like, for example, UMass Amherst had 70,000 kids apply last year. They're spending, on average, five to ten minutes reading an application. So letters that are you know paragraph written, they're skimming through those. They you know they ask us if they wrote bullets. Just if it's quick, and it gives a synopsis of the high school you know career, what they've done. So it's easier for them to read because they get the bigger picture faster. Is that true for all schools? I mean, I, is that happening nationally that all high schools are doing that? I, I'm worried it would reflect poorly on our school and our kids to get a bullet point list versus a little bit. Better. So it's not. The way it's going to be set up is we're going to write some paragraphs, a quick bullet, so it's not just completely bullets. We're going to have the paragraphs, then we're going to have the bullets of the activities, or you know, like their job outside. So that's or, from you, the bullets, the activities. It's not the teacher. Right? No, this is from guidance. So oh, okay. teachers. So well, the guidance department is we're going towards that. The teacher, we just introduce that as a whole. They're they're not there yet. They're still going to be writing the full. Well, so let me jump in. So some, some teachers, so at a, we just introduced it at the faculty meeting this year. So it's basically, you have some claims and then you can fo follow it up with evidence. So it's basically like a claim and evidence. So that the bulleted points, because um, college applications, there's so many of them, um, it's just the highlights are there quickly so that the, all of the um, admissions people can see them quickly without having to go th scroll through it. 
We also recommend it to the teachers that they're talking about the academics because um, college reps don't want to, I mean, we can tell, we the counselors can tell about all the other things that we're doing, all that stuff, all the stuff outside, and things people do at church, the things they do over the summer. Academic teachers need to talk about academics. So that's the direction that we're, we're going. Um, and it's recommended through the National School Counseling Association and um, Matt and Julie both went to some recommendation writing workshops on that. Um, there are other local schools that do it. Lexington High School, it's a model. In fact, she ran a workshop, um, and that's what they're doing for that. So, Rochelle. Just to add to that, um, we provided a, an online survey to the college reps before they came to see us, and I don't know how many have already responded, but one of our questions to the reps was about this bulleted point, bullet point recommendation I've never seen such emotion <laughs> out of the rep as I talk to them. I'm like, so did you fill out the survey? And you know, yes or no, whatever they would say. I'd say, and what do you think about our moving to the bullet points? Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> no exaggeration. Um, we we can we. I think I speak for all of us is that we will continue to provide some of that narrative. But what we're doing is giving them the highlights and sort of switching the process for them. What has happened in the past is they're skimming the letter looking for those little nuggets that they need. And they could, they don't really care about the introductory paragraph and our salutation. They just want the meat and potatoes, so to speak. So we're giving that to them and then including the details if they need it, but it will make it a faster process for them. And the, I don't know off the top of my head what the stats were, but it was overwhelming how, in, in their, their position about, yes, please, thank you. So not to worry. If they're asking for a recommendation from a coach or a non-teacher, how do they do that? Do they get a letter or do they upload it? So there's a forum and guidance that can come down, a little synopsis, you're going to turn that into them. And then whoever that coach is will either email me or Ms. O'Donnell or the counselor and we'll upload it to them. Okay, thanks. Okay. Just one more. Um, what about colleges that ask for <clears throat> self-addressed stamped envelopes for so, the teacher to send the recommendation directly to the school? So like through the mail? So there's a few schools like that, so we'll put together a whole packet for them. So through Naviance, they'll be uploaded. We'll print that out, and then we'll mail it out. And then so there's certain schools will say on Naviance, a little postage, which will say those, you know, can't be online, will be through the mail. So that's all, like, listed when, when the schools or that's like DA or regular. It's right there. So if there is a postage stamp involved, you don't have to send that in. <laughs> we, we, are, that we, we take, take, yeah. we'll yeah. take we'll care of all that. We'll do it for you. Thank you. We have yeah. a couple stamps that have left over for you. Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 That's why I wanted to address the envelope. That's a little scary. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, yeah. so I'm, I, I'm just, this is a little bit granular about the process, but the students must invite teachers through Naviance. Yeah. And then, oh, so there are a couple of questions I have. So. That's an electronic thing that yep. goes to the teacher. Then the teacher fills out a paper thing or prints it out and fills it out, or does it all so same, same like an outside rec, we them. have things down in guidance where yep. the teacher is going to ask, fill out, just like a counselor rec form. Okay. We're going to hand that to them. Just so they can upload it to Naviance, they need to request them through through it. So that okay. way they get a submission, that way they can upload it. So and any one of us, either like through the Naviance parent portal or the student one, can see if a letter is in, is done? Definitely on the student portal. I never okay. see the parent portal, but okay. all the student would see um, is in process or submitted. And if so, have a question, okay, they can come so then us. you have the Naviance part, and yes. let's say the letter is up there, and then you have the Common App. What, do so, they, does that automatically then yeah. go over the Common App? So the Common App, the Common App schools, through Naviance, they're going to match it. So once you have a school listed in Common App, so this thing called the FERPA waiver, you got to hit, you got to signal the FERPA waiver, and then through Naviance Colleges I'm applying to section, you hit match. That way, Common App schools will then link over through our Naviance so we can see exactly where they're applying. Okay. So through Colleges I'm applying to, the student portal, once you get them listed in Common App, you get matched. That way we can see. The thing with that, too, is if it's not a Common App school, there's a little plus button the colleges I'm applying to. They need to do that and individually upload that school that's not on the Common App. So like, for example, Endicott is not on the Common App. 
they have to go put that into their Naviance page so we can see it and send it. This happens all the time too, where students will forget to add a school to Naviance, even though they applied there, because they're just so used to matching, because they just automatically transfer over. So that happens all the time too, where kids will come down, they'll hear from a school saying they never got, you know, we never got the stuff. Then we look and they had never uploaded that school into their Naviance. So it's very, very important for schools that aren't on Common App, they have to go plug it in. Is that Coalition as well? So Coalition too, because the way Coalition works is, you know, we are linked up to Common App through Naviance, so they upload their Coalition into the, the plus button on College of Pine too, so then it will automatically download the art and we send those out. So if you don't, guys don't know what Coalition is, some of the Southern schools are going through it, it's like another Common App. And then if you're on the Common App, I'm sorry for so many no questions. Worries. There's this part that says identify which colleges should receive letters. Yep. So then within each college on the Common App, are you? <clears throat> so there's a button on the audience where you want letters sent. So like for example, some schools, some schools will take only one letter, and you might have two teacher letters in the audience. You then have to go in and choose what letter you want sent. So you can individually pick up what, whatever whatever school which teacher letter you want sent. So that's where there's a little confusion too with students where you might say there's two letters and there's two teacher letters. Automatically they're counting us as, as just automatically going. So you know, let's say you have two or three um, and it only takes one, you, you have to decide what teacher. That's where, once again, let's say you're planning on going to you know, be a you know, science major. That's where we would prefer you send like that science teacher one to You that. can't actually see the letters obviously, right? The letters that you can't look at the letter that was written to see the student or who is selecting the letter that goes the so student. the students aren't going to see the letter but then that's where we tell them like it would be a good idea you know send that science letter for that science so school. just based on who wrote it not based on who wrote it right yeah the teacher we, the we kid. can see them so we might consult oh, okay. them. oh okay. right. yeah. Matt, can i ask one more question yeah. about the counselor letter of recommendation yeah my older daughter went through this process the um, guidance counselors were able to excerpt extra recommendations, like if there was a coach or there was, yeah. you know. So if if there was an additional letter, can that be submitted to yep, you? Yep, we can. We can send that to out? admissions. So we can, if there's not enough, I will just hear like your UMass here is, you know, Lily Wayne writes extra letter. Can you please attach this to our file? But what if there you don't need an additional letter? But it, does it help you to flush out your letter for you to say? And by the way, her coach says you're awesome. So sometimes, yes, we'll you know read through the letters and we'll take a little synopsis of what okay. people wrote. Okay. Great. Right. Um, so there's some stuff that we take care of that your your child doesn't have to take care of. So high school transcript, we will send that. The thing with early action, just know that the transcript is being sent through junior year. Because quarter one grades won't come out till the end of November. All right. So once those quarter one grades come out, we'll send those along with the junior transcript. When did the quarter one grades? Quarter one term one ends November twenty sixth. Usually ready mid November. So it's important that your kids look at their report cards online soon and we give them a few days and say off they go to anything you've already applied to. So early decision schools will get okay. So E D E D E A will get the junior transcript. And then we'll then once we'll send the senior schedule along with it. But they'll also get the senior first quarter grade. <laughs> as soon as they're available. So as soon, as soon as our grades come out, those kids that apply to schools, everything gets sent. So quarter one, and once semester one grades come out, we send those, and then obviously final transcript when it's all said and done. Did, did you guys send last year any explanatory thing that said that the grading, the, the grading yep. system changed? Yep. Okay. And that, are you planning yep, to so send Yep, so it's on the school out? profile that we also sent. So on our school profile, we sent to all, we send to all schools, it's listed on there. Oh, I thought it just said, 4.3 scale. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. It has the scale on it. Yeah. yeah. Last year, we, we, we put that information out to the colleges. They don't necessarily remember from year to year what the scale is from any one school, so they get a copy of the profile. So for those schools that already have it, they will have the current scale to be able to put our reported GPA on the desk. And then we also sent letters of rec school profile transcript, so all that stuff. So like, it will like link up with the school. So um, your son or daughter will send their stuff, the you know, application, test scores, it will get there, and then we'll send our stuff and we'll link up with the school. I have a question. Okay. Well, I follow up your computer set. Sure. Do the schools look at the GPAs for students like four years ago and compare them to now from like almost one of them? And maybe not know that the GPA population changed? Um, 
That's like their own and I don't think they're really they're doing that. They're they're, they're evaluating the pool that they're of the current year. And many colleges the, 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 we, the, one of the questions we asked was about what they're doing with the GPA. Because every high school is doing something a little bit different. So we have a very traditional 4.0 GPA that's weighted. Other schools have it's you know zero to seventy eight. Um, zero to whatever. So many, many colleges recalculate the GPA based on what the, college, the high school is reporting to them as their scale. Um, so they're judging students by the, in the context of the class. That would be saying, oh, most talented women students that applied before had this and the other. No, because there's always a range of kids. And then in a year of mine. All right, so this is where you guys can do some homework. So I'm now <laughs> on the a parent perspective that you guys can fill out. So it's just some information we not, might not know about, about their kid, your kid. So it's nice, you know, something we could add that we might not know. So you guys can get back in, grab the books, grab the paper, and fill that up for us. All right? So thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Um, just to go back, the high school profile goes along with from every high school to a college or a prep school. And it's information about what classes are offered here, what the average SAT scores are. So it does change from year to year. Last year, this is on the website under guidance, under forms. And as you can see, I think we said early October, this year will be available. So it gives um, admissions who's not familiar with our, our high school um, perspective. Did a student take certain classes? Were they offered here, et cetera, et cetera. Details, these aren't gonna apply to all students, but if your student is possibly a D1 or D2 athlete, you probably already know by now that you've gotta go through the NCAA Clearinghouse. There's a website, there's a fee, there's an application. The uh, uh, Clearinghouse exists to protect the student athlete. So timeline of when certain coaches can talk to students um, exist. And then you can probably already know that by now. But if you have any questions, let us know. And that's not the case for D3 schools. Um, as far as auditions go, please note that if a student um, is in performing arts, there will be additional deadlines. You might have to have an application in before you can set your audition up. So it's good to look to the individual schools for the process. Same would be true of a portfolio, what has to be included, how it's submitted. Um, and that might be for an architecture program, et cetera, or art schools. Um, if your student is currently on an IEP or a 504 or receiving accommodations at the high school, you may have those options for your student um, when they get to college. So it's really student specific and what your, their needs are and how that works out from school to school. So if you're looking for things that have been in place that are very supportive and you want to continue that at the college level, there will be a variety of options when it comes to Office of Disability Services, um, student services. So as you've been looking and researching schools, if that pertains to your student, hopefully they're looking to see what those are and you may obtain those services if you've got the testing in place. Within recent time, I believe three years, um, that you submit to the college, and then it's on the student to see how that plays out. Is an office there gonna contact the professor and say they deserve extra time, or if the testing might occur somewhere else on campus. So that doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen from our end. Um, there may be mention of a student who's had a challenge within our letter of recommendation, but that's something that you and the student decide to disclose if you want to. Um, but if your testing, the student's testing has to be sent to the college, that's done separately. Oftentimes it's to admissions, sometimes it's right through to the disability service office. So please ask us questions about that. Okay, nothing's automatic. Um, okay, a couple other things good to know that I'm not sure where else you would hear about them so quickly. Um, the New England Regional Studies Program is a way to potentially cut the cost of a student's college education. Um, and it's changed recently. It used to be schools in New England, if there's a major being offered at a college outside of Massachusetts in a certain school, a state school, the potentially your tuition would be reduced. You're not necessarily just an out-of-state student. So it's not all majors. But because of the decrease in numbers of students in the area, they've recently done something to expand it even more proximity. So if you are closer to one of the state schools in another state, um, potentially, that offers a major than to where we are, it's worth looking at to see if it might cost the same to go to, let's say, a UNH for a specific major than UMass. We're a little closer. Something to think about. Great website. You can, you know, it's on your PowerPoint here. New England Board of Higher Education. So it's worth looking at. The 
used to be more particular and selective, but if you're considering uh, options on way to cut costs, it's something that's worth it. It used to be called the Apple program. Um, another great way to save a little bit of money is what they call the mass transfer. So there's a collaboration between our community colleges and our state colleges and our state universities for certain majors. If you begin at the community college, you maintain, maintain a certain grade point average, smooth transition off to the next school. Specific majors, specific programs, but a significant tuition discount. There's a young man in the room who's helping us tape tonight who is currently a mass transfer student. So if you want to talk to John a little bit later, um, Hamilton went and got doing great things, heading to a business program once he finishes up at North Shore. Um, proof that it works. And an excellent discount. Excuse me for a second. Just, sure. that, just say, um, on my handout, at least I don't know about everybody else, but the one about the um, uh, regional studies program, the website wasn't on there. So ah, I'm it, sorry. It have, yeah, so, so okay, if you Google it. New England Board of Higher Ed, okay, regional studies program, Yep. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Sorry that the yeah, no, just, just there. So it might know. be a different color. So thank you for pointing that out. And if there's anything we say tonight that you go home and you think twice about, don't hesitate to shoot us an email or a phone call. Thank you. <coughs> All right. A couple other things that we'll we'll end here with. Everybody's process is different. We heard a little bit earlier that you know a lot of what is advertised is marketing. Colleges want your students. Um, and uh, everything goes into the process um, from your student's gender to where they live. So there are lots of pieces. Um, so it's very hard to, it is not a one size fits all by any means. Um, and it's, you know, we heard about history of a Hamilton when a student in GPA. If a student has done their research, if your kids have done their research and things make sense based on interest and potential cost, go for it. Um, the scattergrams and Naviance you're probably familiar with. If you're not and you want to know, don't hesitate to ask. There's oftentimes outliers for a variety of reasons. It may be what the, your student is choosing to study. So everybody's process is individual. Um, and you know the cost um, is not the same for one student as it is to the next, necessarily. So it may be scary to see those $70,000 price tags, but that may not be, in the end, what you and your student are expected to pay. Yep. Um, so to go back to the historical grades yeah. and all, so when you go on Naviance, I, I'm sure that those 2017 and before grades where kids are getting in for a certain GPA, yes. they're not adjusted, right? They're not. Because I keep looking at it and thinking, okay, well, put it up 0.2. Mm -hmm. So last year's class it. was adjusted, so they're in the okay. mix. I think it's the past five years of the class. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, and we've asked the reps coming in, it's point two tenths of a smidge of a difference. Okay. So it's not a significant jump and change. So okay. a student should never But don't be too discouraged if you see your child like That's a little bit here. below a lot of the accepted students because you yeah. could yeah. maybe for maybe. some right. because there's so many because the, the number of years that are in the scatter diagrams, there's only one grade that had the new GPA. So right now because when the students look at a scatter diagram, their little blue head on the graph, they're actually would be a little stronger of a candidate when they look in the graph currently but because of the GPA adjustment adjustment. So sometimes kids forget and when I remind them, they're really excited. Um, it's uh, oh this is a better fit than I thought. Um, and a student but, should never rule something out based on the scatter grades. There's so right. much more to them. Their essays, their letters of rep, their mm -hmm. their other um, so great to, you'll see some outliers, and it could be, you know, the major. The nursing major at UMass is the most kept competitive they offer. But maybe the English major at UMass Amherst might not be as hard, so not to put So don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Just no. move your little blue head up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you, you know, this is where they were. So for the GPA, yes. like in Naviance, it says whatever the GPA is, but it's based on 4.3. 4.0. Oh, it is based on 4.0. 4.0 weighted scale. You may okay. have a GPA above a 4.0. So, so if a school says based on a 4.0 scale, we don't have to try and figure out no. the GPA is the GPA. Mm -hmm. It is. And that's oh. okay. But many, many colleges, when we ask this <laughs> yeah, on our so survey, hard. you don't have to guess. <laughs> it's it's higher. Higher. <laughs> There's time at the Ham in Hamilton, Wenham, so we have some transfers, and we don't try to recalculate. 
the colleges often will recalculate the number right. we give them because they're comparing the student to the Pingree student to the homeschool student. Mm -hmm. So to do right. that, you know, I didn't know if it was actually would go down because it was based on four point three. Right. So it doesn't go down. No. Okay. We send the number that appears in ASCO that appears in nominees. <laughs> colleges in turn may accept that. They may mm -hmm. recalculate. Okay. So thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask one other quick question about the scattergrams? Do you know when the August 25th SAT is going to get into scattergrams? So those students who also did the essay, we haven't received those scores yet. So it's the essay that caused the delay. I believe students' scores without essay have been uploaded. So as soon as Andrea Domo gets them, they go up. Um, so soon I will hope. So Naviance has been a little glitchy the past couple days. We actually lost 15 students in the senior class. They went to the class in 2025. So they're back today. So we're hoping that you know things move along. Anything? Think they may be good at things. Okay, no. Scholarships based on MCAS. More exciting. Money. Um, Juniors were notified based on MCAS scores, high performing MCAS scores, about the Coplic Certificate of Mastery. Uh, that is a non need based tuition waiver at the state colleges and universities. Um, the Adams notification is the same benefit, a non need based tuition waiver at our Massachusetts public colleges, um, but notification hasn't gone out yet. So that's based on MCAS scores alone. Okay, and that's an outright tuition waiver student chooses to go to one of the Massachusetts public colleges. Um, Coplic requires a couple of hoops to jump through, where it uh, says here additional academic achievement. That could be scores on AP tests. It could be subject SAT scores. So if a student's considering the public colleges and they received that letter last spring or they don't remember if they do, they can come see us and we can walk them through. Students have until May 1st to say, you know, I want to submit scores. And that could be AP scores from the senior year. So that's important. And if you do receive the Abigail Adams scholarship letter, your students do receive it this fall, hold on to it. You don't have to do any more, but notify the college. Let's say UMass Amherst or North Shore Community College. Those waivers happen somewhat automatically. Okay. Is that it? Perfect. All right. Thank you. So we've given you a ton of information tonight. Um, if you need to come in and meet with us, we're more than happy to meet with you. Your students know where we are. We see them often. Um, and we will also see them in the classroom setting, too. So the best thing to do, my, the best recommendation would be is things, you know, get a notebook, get some sticky pads, and then just start writing some things down because it'll come to you at the strangest of times. Oh, I forgot to ask that. Or oh, what about this? Okay? So a couple things. Next Thursday night, same time, same place. We're going to have a representative from MEPA, which is the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority, come and talk to us about filling out that FAFSA form and financial aid. Okay, so she'll talk a lot about the net price calculators and all of those financial things. We leave all of that to the experts to talk about. So um, please join us. If you can't, um, there is a webinar um, that is the exact same presentation, and we'll put that link up for people. Um, but if you haven't been on the MEPA website, please do so. You can register for um, notifications, and there's a ton of information and always somebody that you can talk to about financial um, questions. Also, <laughs> coming up is a bunch of college fairs. Now, so in addition to the 125 college reps that we have coming to Hamilton Wenham, <coughs> you can also go to one of these college fairs and perhaps see the other 600 that might be in the area at that time. I have to say that if they are going to these college fairs, most likely they're coming to our school as well because they just stay local um, and regional. So definitely hit one of those if you can. A couple tips, and there's a handout that I'll talk about. Um, they always have you fill out those little cards. If you get any of those address labels, sometimes you get them for free in the mail take those because you can just slap one of those right on there and then you don't have to fill it take your time filling it out so that's always just a little tip um, so if you can attend any of those we definitely recommend it I just wanted to quickly go through the handouts that I have we've given you we talked a couple of about a couple of them the list of all of the college reps that are coming some have already come through but I would say um, you know go have your students go through it highlight who they want to go and talk to because it is, it's a pretty good um, way to get to know the person that's actually going to be reading your application. <laughs> a 
couple other things. There is a handout, I believe it's purple. When you go to the college visit, the all important college visit, they do take your name. It does demonstrate interest. So it's recommended, especially for those schools that you can get to, that you're really, really interested in. Um, I love this handout because it asks, it has a bunch of questions that you should be asking people as you go on that tour. Now often it is an ambassador, student ambassador, um, that are gonna walk you around campus, but you should be asking questions. And it, the you is actually the student should be asking the questions, but obviously parents will have questions as well. Um, and then the back of that packet is a checklist. Um, I, there's, we have this great resource which has a ton of checklists, and I'm a fan of checklists, but things that you can ask um, there. There's also a checklist for the college fair, should you decide to go to a college fair, and some of the little tips for that. There's an application checklist in here too, which is something to go that might be um, useful. I also um, included a college comparison worksheet so that when you get the five to 10, hopefully it's no more than 10, five to eight is probably better, um, you can actually compare, all right, and have like a written resource. And sometimes writing things out, even though it's, everything's all digital, we live in a digital world now, sometimes writing it out actually puts things into perspective for you um, and for your student as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Any more questions about it? Yes, they're all, yes they're, uh, okay. they're all in the outside and I can run smart if you ran out. And then the last is for your refrigerator. Just to remind you that next Thursday night. All right. So thank you so much for coming out tonight. I hope we helped put things in perspective for you. We'll be around if there's any questions or you can certainly call and make appointments with us. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great night. Thank you.